are um, want to stay on track on time. Um, good morning. Um, hello, everyone. It is morning in um, Minnesota, so I know that that is not the case for where most of you are from. My name is Lisa Grishka, and I am the Director of Orientation Programs in Orientation and Transition Experiences. And my office works very closely with the International Student and Scholars um, Services Office, or what we call ISSS here on campus. Um, their office is dedicated to working with all international students and scholars at the university and work really hard to provide advising to students who have visa, who have a visa to study here in the United States. They also provide academic and personal counseling and programs for students. Now, we called this session a global gopher session. And so you might be asking, why are we calling it that? Or what is a global gopher? Well, you are now part of the University of Minnesota community and you are considered a gopher. Goldie Gopher is our school mascot. You can see a picture of him here on the screen. He's actually won a lot of awards for being the best mascot in, UN in the United States. He's an icon for his spirit, his persistence, and his very, very unique talents like spinning his head, which you'll learn about when, you're, um, when you get to campus. We believe you have a lot of these same qualities. A common saying at the university is go gophers. So we're gonna practice. In the chat, go ahead and type in, go Gophers. And maybe one of our, oh, there we go. Thank you, Beth, go Gophers. Um, you are a global Gopher because you are joining more than 7,000 international students and scholars from around the globe. We have, um, we have over 130 countries represented at our university. So welcome to you as our global Gophers. This is our second and final forum for international students um, this spring. Alex, can you go to the next slide? Thank you. The first forum was recorded. Um, and for those of you who were unable to attend, um, this was sent to your email and you can also review it on the ISSS website. This is just one of the many ways that we are here to welcome you and support you as you transition to the university. We want to make sure that you understand the next steps for enrollment and give you a chance to ask questions, which I'm sure you have. We understand that for many of you, you are facing enormous uncertainty about your ability to travel to the university this fall. Please know that the university is working very hard to ensure that all international students, no matter if you are in your home country, or here on campus this fall, we'll have classes to meet your needs. Our goal is to ensure that you remain informed throughout the process and help you keep connected to the university community. Next slide, please. This forum is a collaborative effort between International Student and Scholar Services, my office, Orientation and Transition Experiences, we have support from a few academic advisors, um, one from the College of Biological Sciences, um, the other from the College of Food, Agricultural and Natural Resource Sciences. We have staff from the Minnesota English Language Placement, English Language Program. And we also have Boynton Health with us today to give us an update on our changing policies regarding COVID. Before we begin, I have just a few last details. Um, as I mentioned already, this forum was developed to make sure that you understand the next steps in enrollment as we prepare for the upcoming orientation and course registration. In fact, some of you may have orientation already on Monday. Our goal today is that we will have a 35 minute presentation followed by a 25 minute um, Q&A session, um, but we are willing to stay longer if necessary. You can submit um, questions at the bottom of your screen, you can see the Q&A function. We ask that you submit your questions there um, so that we can manage the questions and make sure that we are able to answer all of them. Um, if you submit your question through the chat function, um, we may miss it. So we really hope that you can submit your question through the Q&A. If you have a very specific question around your personal um, needs, we ask that you contact ISSS um, as um, for the more personalized questions. Again, just as a reminder, we are recording this session and in a few days it will be available on the ISS website if you have um, need to come back and revisit it. So we're gonna talk next about your, new, your next steps. Um, this slide here is showing that 
the first step was confirming your enrollment, which you have all done or you would not be here today. At this point in time, you should be um, working on your new student checklist and making sure that you are checking your University of Minnesota email regularly. I know that for some of you accessing our Google Mail um, may be difficult. Um, so know that um, for my office, orientation and transition experiences, we are communicating with all emails that we have on file, but we would like you to, if possible, figure um, working with the VPN to get into the university email would be ideal. Um, on your new student checklist, you should have started that by now. Um, we would ask that you secure an orientation date as soon as possible if you have not done so, and I know many international students have not selected an orientation date. Um, so we would like you to make sure you get that set up. Even if you're unsure about what the fall will bring, it's really important for you to get that orientation date set so that we can um, work with you and your academic advisor to make sure that we have next steps ready for you. Um, in addition to that, um, you'll have a, um, a few other steps that are required of you, and we're going to review that on the next slide. Um, so the first step on that new student checklist that's required of everyone is the Tell Us About Yourself survey. This survey is really to help the academic advisor prepare for your advising appointment. It's going to ask a lot of questions about what your hopes and your dreams are, what your academic goals are. And so it's going to take about 15 minutes to fill out that survey. Um, and then once you've done that, that will allow you to progress into the other steps of the checklist, which include, like I've already mentioned, selecting an orientation date, um, the orientation prep course, and what placement exams you have. Um, and also on that new student checklist is going to be your international student preparation course, um, or what we call IPREP. Alex, next slide. The international prep course is required before your orientation date. And as you can see on this slide here, you can see the different um, components of that checklist. There will be have information about what you should do before you arrive, after you arrive, what the culture here academically is, um, what is necessary for employment, um, some travel suggestions, and just some general cultural adjustment things. Um, this course has been designed specifically for international students at the University of Minnesota. You have an exciting journey ahead of you, but there are steps that you have to take to make sure that you are ready and prepared as much as possible um, and have the support you need to be successful. Next slide. Orientation itself has three requirements this year. The first one was found on that new student checklist, which is the orientation prep course. This is an online learning module similar to what you'll see in your um, international preparation course, your iPrep course, um, but, it is have it, but it has important information regarding your advising and registration process. You will need to complete this prep course, and in order for you to successfully complete it, in the last module of the prep course, there will be a short quiz. It's a 10 point quiz. It is not that hard, but you must pass that with an 80% in order for you to progress to your orientation date. And today we're gonna spend some time talking about your orientation date. And this is gonna occur through Zoom, just like we're doing today. Um, you're gonna select your date on your new student checklist if you haven't already. And you will, as part of this process, register for your fall semester classes, whether they are in person here on campus in the fall or online. Um, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, and then the final piece is your Friday Gopher sessions. On these dates, we will be hosting several live presentations, including a morning session presented by ISSS. This is a very informal room where student leaders and staff will be available. And it's really an opportunity for you to connect with your peers and ask more questions. So as you prepare for orientation, next slide, um, you will get an email the, um, a few days before your orientation. So for example, if you have orientation on Monday, you're gonna get an email a little bit later today about this, your orientation hub. Your orientation hub is where you will go, your first step, for your orientation day to log in to a personalized schedule. And this schedule um, will have all the information and Zoom links you will need to be able to access your orientation. There's also information here for families. 
So you can share this page, orientation.umn.edu, and then families will also be able to access their resources. So if we go to the next slide, we're going to see an example of an orientation schedule. This is a schedule um, that we created to show you what it's going to look like. So when you click into the orientation hub, this will become a personalized schedule just for you. And in here, I want to note that the time zones of your schedule are tied to the location of your um, laptop. So if you are in the United States, it would show the different US time zones. If you are in China, for example, which this schedule is showing, it is showing us China Standard Time or CST time. And so you follow the time on your schedule. You wanna ensure that your laptop or computer or um, desktop, whatever you're using to log into your orientation is set to the current time zone that you are in because the schedule will connect to that time zone. And so we don't want you to convert time. We just want you to follow the time on the schedule. We have a student here today that's gonna to share her experience as a first year student last year in this remote orientation format and what it was like for her. For many of you, you'll have a later evening kickoff event um, called Transitioning to College. And then for many of you, you will go to bed and then the next day you'll have your um, advising and registration time, depending on where you are in the world. So the um, just, pay, just pay really close attention to the times on the schedule. We had a lot of international students uh, missing their advising appointment last year because they thought that the schedule wasn't, wasn't adjusting for time and then they were doing the conversion and then would then miss their appointment. So we wanna make sure you don't miss your appointment and, and pointing this out. Um, we can answer questions about this at the end, but I just want to make sure you see this. Next slide. On your orientation date, it will start at, um, at our local time at 8.45 a.m. with University Welcome. You will then head into a small group with an orientation leader. You're going to meet one of your orientation leaders today, actually. And they will do a session that will talk about um, time management, um, how Higher, higher education looks, what the difference is from what in maybe what you've been experiencing as a high school student versus what you'll experience as a US student at the University of Minnesota. You will be put into a small group with other students from your college of enrollment. So your college of enrollment um, is like College of Liberal Arts, College of Science and Engineering. So that will give you an opportunity to meet um, students from your college, followed by a meeting with your academic advisor. And this, uh, this is from your college, and that is when you'll register for your fall semester classes. Um, your orientation hub will be available as soon as you get the email from us. So for those of you coming on Monday, um, your orientation hubs are ready. You can look at them and get a handle on what that schedule is like. Um, you can expect to be on Zoom um, from 8.40 well, um, for at least five hours. You will have breaks in the day. Um, like I mentioned, you may have a whole evening to go to bed and then get up in the morning, but it, it, we do ask that you plan to be available for the time that you selected for your orientation. Next slide. In addition, we have our Friday Gopher sessions. These are um, live presentations by our campus partners. Um, orientation leaders will be presenting a session called Piece of the Puzzle, which is a play that talks about um, campus life and what it's like to be a student at the University of Minnesota. And then they'll have a discussion afterwards. There'll be a Q&A session with a um, question and answer session with an orientation leader or several orientation leaders. And then there's just a lot of presentations from our campus departments. Our Friday Gopher sessions are hosted on the following dates, but we strongly encourage students to come on the Friday after their orientation date. So for example, if your orientation is on June 7th, we really would like you to come on June 11th, but there is some flexibility there for you to come on another date. So this is an expectation that you attend a Friday Gopher session. Next slide. The it, one back, yeah, thank you. The Friday Gopher sessions look like this. If you're seeing gold, that is a student only session. If you are seeing green, that is for students or family members. And if you are seeing blue, it is only for parents and families. So you can see that for, you, for as international students, you have an 8 a.m. session 
for students and families with ISSS, again, that informal session to connect. Um, and then you can see the pieces of the puzzle is offered at 9, 10, or 11. We've set this up conference style, so you can pick and choose what sessions you want to attend. All of these sessions are found on um, the orientation hub. There will be a link to them on our website. So you can always go back to that orientation hub to get the link um, for these sessions and a little description of them as well. Um, next is our gold book. Um, this publication is created for new students as they um, to help them transition to the university. We have um, been developing this publication for a couple of years and it's super helpful. Um, for international students arriving in the US, you'll pick up that gold book at Welcome Week check-in. And then for those who can't arrive, we will. Um, this is available online at this link. And Alex, are you able to click on that link and open the publication? Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Um, and then Alex, on the top, you'll see a little number option. If you can go to page four, as this loads, I just want to point out a couple of things. Um, at the top there, you'll see uh, um, on page four of 116. This is the table of context. You can see that there is a lot of content in here. And the reality is, is any question you have will most likely be found here about campus resources. And so um, it is super helpful and it is written from the student perspective. So it, it covers topics about safety, but then safety across all areas of the campus, not just about one area of safety. And so this is super helpful. We encourage you to spend some time this summer reviewing it, sharing this with your family, talking it over. Um, I want to point out two other pages, um, page 52. Um, Alex, at the top, you can just type in 52. Oh, there you go. And this is um, the um, some of the resources to help your well-being. I know that mental health is a concern, especially for international students. It was um, students reported in the tell, you, tell us about yourself survey that they had significant concerns about mental health support. And so I wanted to point this out that there are a lot of resources on campus to help you prioritize your well-being. Um, this is all the really easy ways to help you stay in balance by um, doing different activities on campus, making sure you're getting enough sleep, eating well. But if you continue to scroll down, Alex, you'll see that there are other resources um, if it becomes more urgent onto the next page. Um, if you need next level support, you have counseling available. We have case managers, there's Boynton Health. And then if, if it is an urgent situation, we do have um, a crisis line for you, or if you need a roommate or a friend and they need critical support, um, we do have services available on campus. All of these descriptions of these services are found in this section, and I wanted to make sure I took a second to point them out. The next page I'd like to look at is page 86. This is our um, academic success centers. And we have a lot of resources on campus to help students be successful academically. This was also an area of concern for our international students um, on the Tell Us About Yourself survey that you did as part of orientation. All of these resources are available to support you. Um, there are so many academic support resources on campus to support you. So I wanted to make sure you knew about that. You knew where to go to find information about that. And if you use this website, success.umn.edu, you will see all this information in more detail. But I wanted to make sure you knew that this was also found in Goldbook. Um, thank you, Alex, for um, going over to this page. I appreciate it. We can head on back to our presentation. And, and I think our next slide, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to our academic advisor. So I, next, I'd like to introduce Fung from the College of Biological Sciences. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lisa. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the U. My name is Fung Geiger. I am an academic advisor at College of Biological Sciences. I use she, her, her pronouns. Um, I will be going through some slides with you today and then um, my colleague Grant will then also go through the um, Q&A. So I'm going to have Grant um, introduce um, himself to kind of so you can know who is um, kind of answering your questions. So go for it, Grant. 
Thank you, Pong. Hi, everyone. My name is Grant McCormick. I use he, him, his, or they, them, their pronouns. And I am also an academic advisor from the College of Food, Agricultural, and Natural Resource Sciences. And while Fong is going over some of the details of academic advising, if you have questions about uh, meetings with your academic advisor, I will be handling those in the Q&A. Awesome. Great. Um, so yes, I think we are going to go back a slide. Um, thank you, Alex. Great. So as Lisa mentioned, you you will meet with an academic advisor during your orientation experience. Your academic advisor will help you understand degree requirements, help you plan your schedule, and answer questions related to your academic and personal goals. Um, we understand that you probably have some familiarity with an academic advisor in your high school experience. Um, so I just want to explain the advisor's role at the University of Minnesota. So your academic advisor is there to discuss and plan your courses with you, um, help you understand university policies and procedures, also keep you on track for graduation. Um, we're here to connect you to campus resources and support and then help you achieve your goals, um, personal, academic, or career goals. Um, in the past, you may have had one person help you with all of these things. Um, at the University of Minnesota, your advisors may not be able to answer all of your questions, um, but we can definitely connect you with the appropriate office and um, or department to assist you. Um, we also ask that, um, going into your relationship with your advisor that you have an open and honest communication um, communication with your advisor is really important because um, we can't help you um, if we are kind of not aware of either your situation or the questions we may have so um, we can only help you based on the information that we share next slide Yeah, so your, the relationship between you and your academic advisor will be um, important for you to as you continue as a University of Minnesota student. Um, so in order to help you understand more about the relationship uh, between you and your advisor, we created a special section um, in the International Student Preparation course. Um, that course will provide information about forming and understanding relationships, um, the information We'll also include current international student stories on how they work with their advisor, um, an overview on understanding your degree requirements, and then just tips on preparing you, um, preparing to meet with your academic advisor for the first time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in addition to your academic advisor, there are also a team of staff to support you to be a successful student. As I mentioned earlier, um, you may need to speak to more than one person to get your needs addressed. addressed. Um, so if you're unsure where to start, your academic advisor is a pretty good um, kind of first step. Um, we may not know the answer to your question, but definitely will know who to um, kind of guide you to to answer those questions. There are also um, different kinds of academic advisor depending on um, the college that you are in. Some colleges will have just an overall advisor who will be with you from the very beginning to the very end and will be able to answer all of your degree questions. Um, there are also major and department advisors um, where you can learn more about major requirements, coursework, um, research and experiences and how to build skills for that major. Um, so it all depends on kind of which college that you're in. Additionally, um, each college has a career department or center um, with career counselors to help you explore and identify your career goals and explore and prepare um, for graduate school. It is never too early to meet with a career coach or counselor. Um, so please feel free to also um, start building relationships with them as well. Um, yeah, In, and then um, because you and your advisor have limited time together for your information appointment, um, 
we're going to talk about how to prepare for course registration. So you can prepare in advance to make um, most of the appointment that you have with your advisor. Um, so please come with a list of questions that you may have, um, a list of things that you would like to discuss uh, with your advisor. Um, some things we would like you to consider um, is what, what major are you considering? Um, if you have some majors, um, kind of some majors that you want to explore, please feel free to write that down. Even if they're in different colleges, um, it's still good to kind of let your advisor know that um, what you're thinking about. If you are not sure, not too sure, that is okay too. Um, we are here to help you explore majors as well. Um, and then if you have any outside classroom commitments, if you volunteer, if you have um, a job that you will be um, doing during the semester um, or anything like that. If you have to commute, that's also something to know as well. Um, and then do you have any credits coming in as well? Um, and if you're unsure about those incoming credits, your advisor can also talk to you about that. Um, are there any resources that you may need um, while you're at the U? Um, health, disability resources, or student counseling? Um, and then prepare a list of questions, like I said. Um, and then also explore your MyU and course catalog um, and the uh, first year seminar options. They are, those courses are really great and really interesting. Um, students love them, so definitely take a look through them. And so we understand and acknowledge that this um, time is kind of filled with uncertainties and you may have concerns about the fall semester. Um, we might not be able to answer all of your questions today, but uh, what we definitely can assure you is that you'll be meeting with your advisor to discuss fall registration and get your courses um, kind of ready. And if you need to change your schedule um, after orientation, we can also help you with that. So each college um, may handle the process a little differently, but I can assure you that we'll be able to make changes to your schedule if you need. Um, and if you need to be taking courses remotely in the fall as well, we can also um, work with you for that. Um, so yeah, it's good to have you all here and I will be introducing Leanne next. Um, so go for it, Leanne. Thank you, excuse me. My name is Leanne Godfrey and I'm here to tell you about the Minnesota English Language Program. It's also known as MELP on campus. Um, we offer credit courses in English grammar, reading, writing, and speaking in order to be more effective in your studies, research, and work at the university. Uh, I highly recommend taking a class for several reasons. The first is that the University of Minnesota is really big, um, but MELP is small and MELP classes are small and you'll get to know your instructor and classmates and start to build a community within the U of M, even if you're online. Um, secondly, and this will help you further develop your English language skills. At MELP, we believe that language, is an language learning is an ongoing process and even native speakers need to develop their academic and professional language. We're always growing and um, learning new vocabulary and ways of using language. So even if your TOEFL scores or other um, assessment, language assessment scores are, are high um, and you have strong English language proficiency, I know you do because you've been admitted to the university, um, this is still an opportunity to focus on academic and professional English in a real context. And you'll get um, a lot of support in doing that. So lastly, adjusting to studying in English in a new culture, in a new country, um, can sometimes be harder than we expect. Um, being surrounded and immersed in a new language and culture um, can be tiring. And so, and there are a lot of new academic expectations. Um, things will be different at the University of Minnesota than what you have experienced in the past. So taking a MELP class, um, whether you are doing one online or face-to-face, -face, will support you in that transition. Um, and will help increase your confidence, not just in language, but in general, in being a student in, in, the, universe, or in the United States. Um, next slide, please, Alex. Um, there are a few courses that I wanna tell you about for fall um, and um, 
Some of them will be offered online and I have noted here async, so asynchronous remote. So if you are um, in your home country or even if you're in the United States and you wanna take an online class, um, these will be offered. There'll also be some face-to-face -face classes as well. So a nice mix. Um, some classes such as the first one there, ESL 3001, or 3102, they're broad and focus on a variety of language skills um, that can help you transition to using English at the university. And there are other classes that are really intended to help you practice and develop specific skills and support you in specific programs. So for example, 3602 is about um, developing speaking skills um, to help you better participate in class and give presentations. Um, and 3402 is specifically about writing um, and then ESL 3006, for example, is really meant to support you in business and professional communication. Um, and someone asked in the chat about um, proficiency scores. And if, if you, once you get to campus or you can reach out to ESL um, at umn.edu and I can put that in the link or in the chat. Um, but we also have um, testing on campus in different kinds of um, ways. So if you, need to do a testing, you can do that here and then you can be placed into a class. Um, or if you have an AZ hold, you can contact them as well. Um, students who have taken our classes find them helpful for developing English and for building a strong community. Um, Alex, you can go to the next one. Are we there? Yeah, okay. Um, and one last thing I wanna um, mention is that we have an, a tutoring program called CELS, um, which stands for Student English Language Support. And it's a free tutoring service. Um, it's 45 minutes, one-on-one, -on -one, and um, you can do the appointments online, or I, I'm not sure what this, what, if we'll be face-to-face -face in fall at all, but um, either way, there'll be appointments available. And these are free, and you can talk about anything. You can come with a class assignment, or you can work on something related to American culture, small talk, um, anything that you um, want to work on, you can. Um, and there's a link there. Um, they'll be available for you to um, make appointments. Um, and then last, I wanna share one link in the chat. We have online resources to help you if you don't have time to take class, but you wanna continue working on developing English or learning about American culture. Um, there is a link there in the chat. And I'll also put ESL at umn.edu um, if you have questions related to English language classes or development on campus. So thank you so much and welcome. Um, we look forward to seeing you in the fall. And I'm gonna pass it now to Marina. Thank you, Leanne, and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Marina. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I uh, work for ISSS. I um, will be welcoming all of you in August uh, via our Global Go for events. Um, just like many of you who are joining us today at this webinar, I used to be an international student. So June is a month of excitement where I'm trying to figure out everything I had to do before I came to the University of Minnesota so I can feel the excitement and I hope you're all super excited to be Global Gophers. Um, two things that I would like to mention about summer programming, we will be offering the Global Gopher events and it will be virtual this year on August 25th, 26, 27. So if you're an undergraduate student joining us uh, via Welcome Week as well, make sure you check out your Welcome Week registrations on July 1st, because that's where your registration will be. And for our grad students, this information will also be available on our website. Um, can we go back one slide back, Alex? And we will also have the International Buddy Program. This is a mentorship program that pairs new international students and second year students. So if you have been at home for your first year and you're arriving to the University of Minnesota for the first time, please sign up for the International Buddy Program where you will be paired up with a current U of M student, domestic or international, to ease your transition to the university. So check out your emails on around the week of June 20th because you'll get information about both of these programs. Um, next slide, please. Okay, one of the biggest questions we've gotten is, what if my plans change? So one of the questions was, if I decide not to come um, in the fall of 2021. So you can actually select to take a gap year and you have until July 1st to do so. And if you want to do that, please contact the Office of Admissions 
at admissions at umn.edu to update your admission status. If you want to change your fall semester classes, this is a great question to ask your academic advisor. They can help you change your classes and your registration as well. Um, if you have questions about on-campus housing, I saw a question on the Q&A before, when we'll be hearing from Housing and Rest Life. If you live in an LLC or a live and learning community, such as Global Gopher Community, you should be hearing um, sometime today or pretty soon about your housing assignment. And if it's any of the other on-campus housing, like Pioneer or uh, Centennial, you should be hearing by the end of July have any questions, email the housing folks over at housing at umn.edu. And lastly, uh, but not least, uh, is the question about if I have visa questions or international student status, then please ask our colleagues over at ISSS and ISSS new at umn.edu. Today we have uh, KB who is answering, uh, is checking that email account. So make sure you uh, send us an email there if you have any questions about your new student status. Can I get the next slide, please? Cool. The best part of our job is working with amazing University of Minnesota student leaders. So today we have Louise, Michelle, and Key, and I will be asking them to introduce themselves shortly, and you will get a chance to ask them questions. And if you have noticed, they have also been answering some of the questions in the Q&A. So um, Louise, if you could introduce yourself, that would be awesome. Hi everyone, my name, is, my name is Louise and I'm one of the orientation leaders this year and I'll be happy to answer your questions about orientation and uh, other aspects of the university. Hi everyone, this is Key. Uh, I'm your mobile gopher leaders and I will answer some questions uh, related to like um, campus life and getting around here. I'll pass on to Michelle. Hi everyone, nice to meet you all. My name is Michelle, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm one of the Global Gopher Influencers and I'm a second year student in the College of Science and Engineering. Um, so as you can see, I'm class of 2024. I actually spent my whole freshman year at home, so I'm just as excited yet at the same time nervous as most of you are probably. Now. And thank you. Uh, I look forward to all of you to get to meet them throughout the rest of the webinar. I'm now going to pass it on to Catherine, who will be talking a little bit about health and safety. And I've seen a lot of questions in the Q&A, so I'm hoping we'll be able to answer a lot of those questions. So please, Catherine. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Catherine Harrison, and I'm just going to touch briefly on a topic that's been a big part of all of our lives in the past year and a half which is COVID-19. I'm here today, I'm part of the Health Emergency Response Office. Today I'm kind of representing my office as well as Boynton Health, which is the healthcare provider here on campus. And while we've been very consumed with COVID in the past year, the Health Emergency Response Office also responds to other large scale emergencies on campus. So if there is a weather emergency like a tornado, or extreme heat or cold or some other man-made disaster. Um, that is a, a space where our office works very closely with campus partners to ensure the health and safety of all of the campus community. So again, today I'm just gonna share a little bit about COVID-19 on campus. So on campus and in the state, the good news is that the situation gets better every day. We have had a total of 1,413 cases on campus since we started tracking at the beginning of the pandemic last March, but we've only had one case in the past week, which is wonderful. Um, our cases peaked in November and we do have a dashboard that's updated um, uh, weekly that where you can see the history of cases on campus, testing numbers and, and so on and so forth. The other really good news is that we are a strongly vaccinated community. Uh, we are expecting a announcement about whether or not vaccinations will be required uh, to come from the university leadership next week, but uh, we do highly recommend vaccination. And as you can see, um, many people on campus are fully vaccinated. 84% of our campus is fully vaccinated and 93% have um, had at least one dose. And this, this data is a couple weeks old actually, so that it's probably even more people now. 
Uh, similar good news in the state. The cases are actually, I have even more updated information. The cases are the lowest they've been since last April when the pandemic really was getting going in Minnesota. So that's wonderful news. 64% uh, uh, of people age 16 and over, older have had at least one dose of vaccine. And I think now um, up to 59% are fully vaccinated. So almost, almost 60%. Um, and, it, and then other things, other indicators, cases, deaths, and hospitalizations have all been following. We can go to the next slide. So this is all great news. Um, of course, health and safety remains a top priority. If you need testing or vaccination on campus, it's available to you. Uh, every day, uh, testing is available at the Recreation and Wellness Center. You'd be able to make an appointment through the My Boynton Patient Portal. And it's available to all students, including international students, whether or not you have COVID symptoms. So if you think you were exposed or you're just worried, um, you, you, know, you can go make an appointment to get tested and, um, and be able to just do that. It's very convenient. In terms of COVID vaccination, it is not required at the state level. And again, we're awaiting announcement. Uh, we had expected that to come out this week, but um, we're waiting patiently till next week when that announcement will be made. We do recommend you get vaccinated as soon as you're able. We say that the best vaccine is the one that's available to you right now. If it's not available to you, you'll be able to either make an appointment at Boynton to get the vaccine, or if you're being seen at Boynton for another reason, say um, a physical therapy appointment or uh, just a general wellness check, you can ask for the vaccine during your visit and get it right then and there. So there is a lot of information about these processes. Um, and so I'm including in some of the written information you'll receive a couple of different websites. Um, Boynton's website, the Safe Campus website have great resources um, for that, for these, um, for these um, services. The last thing I'll just mention is many people have asked whether they need to quarantine when they come into the state. There is no travel related quarantine requirement. Of course, if you've been exposed to someone or you have symptoms of COVID or you're awaiting a test results to see if you have COVID, then you will need to quarantine. But for travel alone, there are no quarantine requirements once you arrive uh, in town. So we remain vigilant, but we also feel as safe as we ever have at this moment in the pandemic. And we hope, um, we hope you feel that way as well on campus. So thank you. And I will be passing it on to Beth for our question and answer session. Well, hello everyone. My name is Beth Eisensee and I'm an assistant director at International Student Scholar Services and I use the pronouns she, her. Um, I will tell you, I was so um, listening so carefully to what Catherine um, shared that I uh, forgot that I was um, going next. <laughs> so um, very important information. So I just wanna thank all of our panelists. I know it was a lot of information today um, hopefully it was helpful to you in just remembering that we have many more opportunities where you'll have a chance to ask questions and learn more. But for now, we're going to go ahead and start our question and answer session. Uh, these questions are based on what was submitted uh, during your registration for this webinar. And if you have an additional questions, please go ahead and put those into the question q and A. It says Q&A at the bottom of your Zoom uh, screen. But go, we'll go ahead and start with the questions that were submitted during your registration process. So we're going to start with our fabulous international student leaders who have experienced what it's like to be a new student at the university. Uh, um, and so I'm gonna start with the first question. So the first question is to Luis, how is, how is our academic work going to be done compared to high school work? 
Hello y'all, my name is Luis and I'm here to answer this question as orientation leader. So on your orientation day, you will be having a discussion about this and this event will be called Transition to College and we will have a thorough discussion about this topic with the people you're having orientation day with. And for me, uh, this means two things is uh, one is the autonomy of study really goes up because there's no one there to tell you Oh, it's time to do 10% of your work. It's time to do this. It's time to do this um, You will a lot of the times you will just have a deadline and you have to work out your schedule on your own and Another thing is I believe there are more resources available But uh, you will need to take a lot more initiative than you have in high school and uh, There are more resources available. You just have to need the motive the initiative to actually go out there and seek and seek them out Great and this next question for you Louise is what if I can't follow a professor's instructions or I can't get used to the life in in the US yeah, that is actually a great question that I struggled with when I was a first year too. So if you're struggling with language and uh, with language and like language barriers, you can also you can always go to MELP. We have just met them uh, about the English language program you can improve your English on. And also you can also go to the uh, Multicultural Academic Excellence, MCAE, and they are also can help you with English language learning and also academics. And also, if you are worried about a study progress, I suggest you can uh, feel free to reach out to your TA, to professors, and there are a lot of campus partners that hold tutor sessions, no matter it's for specific classes, or it's the uh, Smart Learning Commons that can help you tutor your class, and their tutors will be students too who have scored at least an A- minus in the class, so they'll be very equipped to help you out. Oh, and mental health. Uh, mental health would be um, supported by the student counseling services and uh, I believe they are putting up um, counselors that can actually speak Mandarin or counselors can adjust to your own language and are very culturally sensitive counselors so I believe they will be able to help you out. Just saying, thanks Louise, I have a follow-up question. Can you describe what the difference, what a TA is and how they're different from a professor? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, a TA stands for the teaching assistant. They can be a graduate student or they can be undergrad students too. So they are mainly in charge. Some, some of them are in charge of holding discussions or maybe simply answering questions or grading your homework. But for some TA, they actually hold a discussion um, uh, that is a part of the class and uh, they do not hold the authority to they don't, they don't hold much authority as the professor in deciding your grades, deciding the syllabus, uh, knowing if uh, you need to, uh, what is the review materials. They do not know them as much as the professor and do not have that much of authority on deciding classes, but they are a primary way of contact if, you, if your professor is super busy or you feel like they're too intimidating to contact. Great. Thanks for clarifying it, because I think the t teaching assistants are a really great way to, um, they're, they're great uh, supports during the awesome. So Lisa, uh, Luis, uh, I have one more question for you. Um, how can I choose classes which are popular? This is an interesting question. So um, I decided to ha take it in the meaning as uh, either a GPA booster or a fun class you want to take. So if if you want to take a class that is easy and can boost your GPA, uh, that's to or just for fun, that's totally fine. You can ask your tutor, your advisor, and also senior students who have already taken this class and just ask them, how is this class like? Is this, is, is, is um, this session different from that session? And how are the teaching styles? What are the homeworks? Um, this will be a good idea to know which classes are good for you. Uh, but uh, just a reminder that if you are taking, if you are trying to take a class that is either not needed and that you're not interested in, I suggest not taking a class because others take it, because you have other friends around you that you have different majors in, have different interests in, and uh, I know it can be very tempting to, let's, okay, let's take this class together, but I would suggest you um, talk about your classes with your advisor a lot and see if you actually need to take them. Thank you, Louise. 
Um, so the next question is for Key. Um, Key, um, one of the uh, questions submitted was, I am concerned about time management. How do you manage your time? So yes, um, time management is really quite important in college. Uh, for me, I would start with uh, listing things that are important for you, like then uh, estimate the time you're gonna do it. Like start with a uh, high urgency, high important task. For example, like a term paper due tomorrow. Then low urgency, high important task like a paper due in five weeks. Then um, high agency, but low uh, important task like text message from friend. And then move to like, um, the low urgency and low important tasks like Netflix and social media. Uh, so after you identify your tasks in this group, uh, spend about like 30 minutes on Sunday and five minutes at the end of the day to make a um, to-do list for the next week or next day. So with, with this, you will spend your time effectively in college. Great, thank you. And I just a reminder too, is that in the gold book, a lot of these um, topics or questions that you're asking about are in the gold book. And so um, a lot of what our, our student leaders, you, you, you can learn more um, in the gold book. So I really suggest that everyone looks at that as well. Okay, for the next question, Key, how, how can I find a gym and a basketball court on campus that is accessible? Uh, so yeah, um, so the gym or like the university creation and wellness centers, uh, we usually call uh, UNN Redwell. It's located in the East Bank location. So this play have like six basketball and court inside, the, inside them and the Fields House, which is like five minutes nearby in East Bank location, also have four basketball court inside. So for students live in St. Paul, dormitory, which is Bailey Hall. So don't worry that you have to go to 20 minutes by bus to go to the gym in East Bank. I believe in St. Paul campus, there's also a gym called St. Paul Gym, which is smaller compared to the gym in East Bank. But they have a lot of amenity. And this is five minute work from Bailey Hall in St. Paul. Great, and then the next question is about uh, transportation. What kind of transportation mode should students take in, um, take to get to class, especially during the cold winter? Yeah, um, it's a really good question. So for cold winter, I would recommend the student to take the Metro Transit uh, Campus Connector and the University Avenue Circulator. So the Metro Transit Connect from West Bank to East Bank, um, in like five minutes and the campus connector and university uh, circulator connect between uh, East Bank, West Bank and Sample campus. And it run every um, five, oh no, 10 to 15 minutes. So taking this public transportation will help you get to class easier in the winter. As the winter here is really cold and the snow is really thick. So you can, walk to class, but I do not recommend that it take really long. Um, I recommend you to download the uh, app called Go For Trip. Uh, and when you get here, um, remember the location of Metro and bus stop on the campus. That would be really helpful in the winter. Thank you, Key. Um, so those are great. That's really great information. And you're probably thinking to yourself, uh, where do I find out more? And I will just say again, please go to the gold book because because everything that our student uh, leaders are talking about is in the gold book as well. So the next question, I'm actually going to have Lisa start this off, which is um, the question is, will COVID-19 have a huge impact on my learning and social experiences at the University of Minnesota? And I, I just want to remind um, all of us that you could be coming to the University of Minnesota person or you could be uh, studying on online. So uh, Lisa, from that perspective, what do you think the impacts might be? Well, I, I do think that the impacts have been changing um, quite quickly here in Minnesota with the decline in cases. If so, for those of you who are coming to campus and will be with us in the fall, um, the impacts, um, I think, will be fairly minimum. The 
Um, right now, the, the biggest thing that we're unsure about is the dining facilities and how many people will be able to eat in the dining facilities um, for um, at a time. And so that is the probably the biggest unknown for us at this point of time. You will have food, whether that's a takeaway where you um, pick it up or you can eat in the facility. And that is what we're still working on and how many people can eat in the facility. Um, I think that will be where the impact is. Um, but in regards to the residence halls, they are planning to be at full capacity. Um, the classes, uh, more than 85% of our classes will be taught in person. Um, the mask mandate, I saw that question come up, has been um, dropped for everyone who is vaccinated. You are not required to wear a mask in a building if you are vaccinated. If you are not vaccinated, then you will need to continue to wear your mask. Um, the student, student groups are starting to meet um, in person again. Um, there are activities happening on campus. Um, we um, have our first home football game and, and um, we're waiting to hear about our occupancy rate. Right now, occupancy is for events at 10,000. Um, so there are some things that are changing over the summer and, um, and loosening up because our rates, as Catherine just shared, have dropped so significantly, especially in the last month. So um, I'm not sure about, um, so much can change between now and September as well. And so at this rate, we're looking pretty good to have limited impact. Um, for those of you who aren't able to arrive in the United States, we are working very diligently to identify courses um, that will be available to you in each of the colleges in an online format um, and so in a remote format. And so the, when you get to advising and registration, your academic advisor should be asking you, are you able to arrive in the US? And that question will help determine how they advise and register you for fall semester. So um, that is where the impact for those of you who aren't able to secure a visa and arrive in the US at this time. Thank you, Lisa. And I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle to answer this question. As you have studied for your first year um, online uh, from, from your home country, can you talk a little bit about how, how it's impacted you? And Michelle, too, if you can also talk about your orientation experience as part of this as well, would be great. Okay. Um, so based from my experience, the biggest challenge was um, obviously the time difference. So uh, what helped me most was always trying to double check um, the time, ma making sure that it was either in like CDT or my own time zone. And then once I figured that out, I, I used to just always put um, all my classes and everything on the Google Calendar and set on like multiple reminders. So I, I'm, I'm sure that I won't miss them. I also turn on my alarms on my phone. So yeah, I just had a bunch of reminders that really helped me. And this was also very applicable to my orientation. Um, I remember that I set like about three alarms to remind me that I had orientation during like 9 p.m. at night and then like another one in the next morning because my orientation was like divided um, into the night and like the next morning. So, yeah. Thank you. And I just want to check in before we move on uh, to see if Catherine, do you have anything you want to add around uh, life on campus and how it might be changed because of COVID? Um, you know, I think Lisa summed it up pretty well of where we are now and um, things will continue to change. Uh, but the one thing I will just add is that when it comes to things like masks and distancing, we are trying to promote a strong culture of folks doing what they need to to feel safe and take care of themselves. So if you've been vaccinated and you still want to wear a mask, I mean, I've been vaccinated, I'm pregnant, when I'm on campus, I still wear a mask. Um, you know, you should feel free to do that. And, um, and then just, you know, stay, stay tuned in for information as it changes. Great, thank you. Um, we're, we're running, so just so you know, you may recognize that we're, uh, we've been here with you for an hour. Um, which was our originally scheduled time. We're gonna go for about 15 more minutes so that we can um, answer more of the questions that you submitted. So to the panelists, I might start jumping around a little bit because um, I wanted to make sure to get to everyone. So um, Louise, I wanted to ask you, what is though the students would, or participants I wanted to ask, what is safety like on campus? So um, for that question, I think I can answer it with like, it feels generally safe because um, I 
came from a big city, so in comparison, it's like it's not a lot of people anywhere. So I feel like it's generally safe. And、uh, if you have a class at night, I would suggest you walk with others. But if that's not available to you, you have、um, the following resources you can go to.、Uh, the primary resources will be the University of Minnesota Police Department, and they offer services like sixty.、Uh, See numbers I can't do six twenty four walk, which means if at night and you have a class that is that is on campus and you want to go home, however it's dark, you want to get someone to escort you back, then you can call them, can call them and have them escort you from your location to your home or where you want wherever you wanted to be. the The range will be within one mile of the school. And、uh, if you feel like it's too far, or if you if walking is not good for you, you can always、um, ask them if the gopher chauffeur is still available because、um, they have been closing down. Also,、uh, it's like a car system that drives you home, but the car system has been the car services has been. Postponed or has been canceled because of COVID, and、uh, we're hoping that it would reappear again in the following semester. And also, if you walk on campus, you can see there's a blue light, a blue pillar that is called the blue light system, and there's always emergency calls around there. Thank you, thank you very much, Louise. And of course, again, these a lot of your questions are answered through the gold book. So、um, please go ahead and and look at that a little bit more to find out more details. So,、yes. and a lot of the questions you can still answer your orientation leaders, and、uh, us orientation leaders will be happy to help you out. And、uh, if we can, we'll seek out the resources for you. Thank you, Louise. Such a great reminder of the people that we have available to to, to answer your questions too. Thank you for that. Well, I'm going to move on to some questions for our academic advisors. So, Fang, the first question is: Can I study different courses before start deciding my major, and can I change my major to a different college in the, at the University of Minnesota? So,、um, oh. did you want Fang to answer that specifically, or? No. Go for oh, okay. It, <laughs> so,、um, yes, we one hundred percent recommend that you take classes that are not directly related to your major, as what we call elective classes. So you will not be taking all classes that are directly in line with your major.、Um, there are liberal education requirements that you have to take, and a lot of majors have room for you to take. Again, what we call electives, which are classes that will help get you to that one hundred and twenty credits that you need. Because every major requires 120 credits for you to graduate, so that means you do have some room to take other classes to explore your interests and maybe see if there's a minor that you want to take. Maybe see if there's something that you want in a different major.、Um, that is 100% recommended. As far as switching your major to another college, the answer is yes, kind of.、Um, Every college has a different process for how you can switch into a different major, and you should definitely talk to your academic advisor during orientation if you want to go into a different major or even add a second major.、Um, some colleges don't have a complicated process, and switching your major can be easy. But some colleges have classes that you have to take as prerequisites before you can be accepted into that major. So this can get a little bit complex. But what you'll want to do to solve all of that is talk to your academic advisor about your hopes and plans during orientation. They will be able to help you as best as they can and give you the most information based on that specific major. Great, thank you, Grant.、Mm -hmm. um, so、uh, another question is, what can I do if I can't keep up with my teacher? So similar to the, what we asked the student leaders, but what is your perspective on that? So the best thing to do, and this is a different thing culturally in the U.S., is you'll want to talk to your professor during office hours or talk to them after class if you're having trouble keeping up with them.、Um, a lot of professors actually encourage that you go and talk to them directly and bring up your worries and concerns. I know in some other cultures and some other countries, this can be seen as a sign of weakness almost. That is not the case here. We always want you to tell us if you're having trouble keeping up with the content in the class. We also have a lot of other、uh, academic success services 
that are all throughout the university and you can find the vast majority of those in your gold book. You can talk to your academic advisor, you can talk to your teaching assistant or TA and all professors will have office hours where you can talk to them after class to bring up some of these concerns. Um, so there are a lot of resources, but the big thing is you have to be the one that asks for help because we don't always know when you're struggling and your professor might have over 300 students in the class, so they can't keep track of every student. So we really 100% encourage you, if you're struggling, ask for help, talk to your professor, reach out to your academic advisor and use the resources available. Great, thank you, Grant, that's very, really helpful. So the next question submitted was, how are we supposed to take class and at classes and turn things into the professor? especially during the COVID time? So all classes, well, most classes are going back to in-person and every professor will have their own method of how you turn in assignments, how you take exams, how you do homework, how you work on projects and so on. Um, a lot of classes will use our university website, which is Canvas. And a lot of assignments may be turned in online and you may also submit your projects online. Um, some of them, you might have to turn in actual physical copies for in-person classes, but the method of class that you take, whether it's in-person or online, the professor should go over how you turn in your assignments and how you turn in your projects, but know that it does change based on the professor, they should tell you what they're looking for. Okay, so the next question is, what are your recommendations about how many credits to take, especially if, if a student wants to accelerate the time that they have in the degree? That's a hard question to answer. Um, it all depends on if you're coming in with any credits and it really depends on your major. So I tell my students that the number of credits is a general guideline for how much work to expect, generally three hours per week of work. So if you have a three credit class, you can expect it to be roughly nine hours a week per work, roughly. Um, but some classes, like if you took an equivalent of calculus during high school and you're taking calculus, maybe you're not spending as much time every week working on your calculus homework. So it really comes down to how comfortable you feel with those classes for how many credits you should be taking. Um, at the U, we recommend that you take 15 credits a semester on average, which means you would have eight semesters or four years to graduate on time. Um, if you want to graduate earlier, then you would want to take a higher number of credits each semester, but you need to balance if that would be a lot more work and make things tougher on you, balancing everything, versus if you feel like you need to graduate early or you want to graduate early. Um, so that's something that your academic advisor will definitely talk to you about. And you should bring up your plans if you are hoping to graduate early with them so that we would be able to help you plan earlier and make it a little bit easier to see if you can graduate early. Great, thank you, Grant. And I, I think one thing that I will share that I've heard from both our students, our current international students, as well as um, academic advisors in the past is that in the, your first semester, you really, it will take a while to get adjusted. And so to not take too many credits as you're adjusting, because of course, if, if it doesn't go well for you in the first semester, you know, those, it's hard to, to rebound with your GPA. So really think about your, for your first semester, not taking too many credits so that you can have time to adjust, get used to, to the, the way of studying at the university, to manage your time. Um, that is what we've heard from our current international students is to really, the first semester is, should not be, to not too too much in the first semester. And um, also to add on to that, I was a student at the U my first semester, I wound up taking 19 credits and I felt fine. But then my first semester of my second year, I took only 15 credits and that was the hardest semester that I had. So it really does depend on the classes that you're taking as to how difficult your semester might be. And your academic advisor will guide you through 
how a semester might be tougher than others based on both the number of credits and the types of classes you're taking. Perfect. Thank you, Grant. Thank you for sharing that. So I'm going to move on to a question for um, Betsy Madden from ISSS. And if you could introduce yourself, Betsy, that would be great too. But can, can international students work on campus? And if so, how can they find a job? Hi, yes, I'm Betsy Madden. I use she, her, her pronouns. And I am the head of the F1 program in ISSS and Purdue University. So working on campus, yes, F1 students are allowed to work on the University of Minnesota Twin Cities campus up to 20 hours per week. The easiest way to find a job is um, there's a special student section of the U of N, UMN job website. And I'll put that website on in the chat um, so that you can find it there as well. So you'll click, you'll, there, there will be a special um, maroon button that says students. And so you'll click on that and that will filter jobs that are only available to students. Great, thank you, Betsy. Um, so I'm gonna move on, to, we're almost at 9.15. So I just, I'm gonna circle back and ask a couple questions to Lisa from Orientation and Transition Experiences. Lisa, can you just uh, make sure that, we, that everyone knows how to select or check for their orientation dates? Um, so just as a reminder, your orientation date to select it is on your new student checklist. And to access your checklist, it is at just checklist.umn.edu. And you'll log in there and then you'll be able to see your new student checklist. Um, you will, um, I, I, you should be able to see your orientation date on that checklist as well. Um, otherwise, if you want to change your orientation date, because we're at, at just at the beginning of our cycle, um, the only way now to change your orientation date is to contact your college directly and request a change of date. I've seen a few questions in the chat about, um, about is, is, am I at a disadvantage if I have an August orientation date? And the answer is no. Um, there, there are benefits, obviously, of coming earlier, like you will have all class times available to you. Um, but what we do at the university is the classes that are most sought after, um, our seats are held in those classes and released every day of orientation. So students have equal opportunity at those classes. And so it doesn't matter what day you come to orientation. Now, the thing that does differ is the time of day of the class. So if you come later in the summer, you'll have less choice about the time of day that your classes are. So that is the only um, downside of a late August orientation is you, there may be only one or two sections available instead of maybe 15 or 20 in June. So um, just know that. But at this time, we're pretty full. We have over 6,300 students with orientation dates already. So if you haven't gotten your orientation date, um, please make sure you call and get or go on to your checklist and get that done. Great. And Lisa, I will ask you the final question which is there seems to be so many steps that, that I need to do. I'm really afraid that I will forget or leave out some steps. What are your suggestions for managing all of these steps that I have to take? I think the biggest thing is to keep uh, managing your email is a big part of this because we will communicate over and over again and you'll get repeated message in your email. Um, the biggest thing is completing that new student checklist and reviewing the steps in that checklist. If you do all of those things, um, including the international prep course, everything is laid out very clearly for you. Um, and then just managing your email is going to be the next major component. If you feel like you've missed something, just reach out and ask. Um, the staff in ISSS is very um, helpful and available to you to make sure that, that they um, have you have everything you need to get here and then I'll let you know if something is missing, especially in regards to your immigration paperwork. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. This is not the only uh, opportunity that you'll have to ask questions. You'll have several opportunities over the summer through orientation, through the Gopher Global, uh, through the Gopher Fridays, 
and, through, and a lot of different programming through August as well. So this is just one of many opportunities that you will have to ask the questions that you have. So as you, as you think of your questions, please write them down. Keep a journal of the questions you have so that you can, um, when you meet with someone or you attend an event, that you can make sure that you um, have a chance to ask those questions. So we're going to leave today with a video, and um, I th am I sharing the video or are you, Alex? I think I might be. Yes, you're sharing it. Okay, I have to go up and get it. But just this one second, please. So, um, Leanne, would you be willing to introduce what the video is? Is Leanne still here? Yep, I think she had a leap. Oh, <laughs> okay. So this video um, we're gonna show you, this is about from the, the Minnesota English Language Program. And that is one of the um, uh, re resources that you'll have at the University of Minnesota. And uh, still looking for it. Um, oh, here it is. Oh, here it is. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And what if this video, why this video is really important is that um, it talks about what, for many of you, English is your second language, or maybe your third or fourth language, and maybe some of you it's your native language. But I think the point in the video is really well taken about language being a lifelong journey. So we're going to show you this video from current international students sharing about how they see language development. And after that, we will end the webinar. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Thank you as, as I navigate this. Oh, I just lost my... Okay, I'm gonna try this a different way. Okay, now I have it. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna to go to the video. And this is what we will end with today and give you some th something to think about for when you're registering for your classes. Oops, hold on. I bet I didn't hit share sound. We've come from around the world to the University of Minnesota to learn new things, have new experiences, and pursue our dreams. The University is a big, diverse, and exciting place to be, and sometimes that can feel overwhelming, especially if English isn't your first language. Sometimes class discussions move too quickly for me to jump in. How do other students read everything they are assigned? It takes me all night. Sometimes, I feel like people don't want to be in group project with me. I'm funny in my native language, but it's harder to be funny in English. Even though my TOEFL score was high, I'm still nervous about asking questions in class. It's easy to feel discouraged sometimes, and some may judge us because our English isn't perfect. But we also know how valuable being multilingual is. I can think outside the box to solve problems. I can communicate with so many more people. Effective communication is something that employs value. I'm more creative and flexible in new situations. I know that being multilingual will be important in my future career. Studying at the U, we're learning and experiencing so much and there are so many opportunities to improve our communication skills. I went to career services and I feel more confident to network and interview. I go to English support service for extra practice. I'm learning more academic vocabulary for my major. I'm taking a class to improve my speaking skills. All students improve their language skills while studying at the U. We are all learning new vocabulary. We are all adjusting to new expectations for reading and writing in our major. All learning how to interact with a diverse community and finding ways to manage our workload and time. While we are here, Halfway across the world, let's find opportunities to expand our language skills. 
This might mean taking risks and stepping out our comfort zones. We've made it this far. Let's take advantage of everything the University of Minnesota offers to continue building our communication skills. Well, thank you for joining us here today. Um, we, we want you to stay connected uh, through orienta orientation and transition experiences. And of course, international student and scholar services will be sending you email and your college as well. Uh, we, we're going to be providing timely information. So keep on uh, opening those emails to stay, uh, to stay on top of the, all the information as it comes through. And we'll continue to offer full services uh, remotely and of course in person. So on behalf of all of us at the University of Minnesota, we thank you for choosing us and your trust in our university. And you are a valuable part, the most valuable part of our community. And we're welcoming and we'd love to have you here. So thank you very much. And we look forward to further communicating with you.